Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. Certain breeds of smaller dogs, one of those being dachshunds, are known for having a higher risk of herniated discs. Sometimes can lead to paralysis, and until recently, the only treatment for it was very expensive decompression surgery. Well, today we're talking with Dr. Nick Jeffrey, a professor at the, of neurology at Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, who's developed a groundbreaking and much more affordable new treatment for these herniated discs. So, Dr. Jeffrey, I guess off the top, why are dachshunds and some of these certain breeds of dogs more susceptible to having these herniated discs? Um, they, ha they carry a gene that causes the disc to undergo a process of degeneration much earlier than in other breeds. So that even at one year old, you can see evidence of disc degeneration throughout the spine. And as that process carries on, it makes the disc weaker. So when the dog does something that they might do in their everyday life, like just sort of stepping off a curb, jumping on and off furniture, that will be enough to rupture the disc. And then that acute rupturing process leads to the disc hitting the spinal cord and, and causing inflammation and paralysis. Currently, what, what is the process if, if you had a dog that had this, you take them to the vet, well, how, how is this able to be fixed currently? The first process is to try and diagnose it. And so the way that we do that nowadays is to use MRI scans or CT scans that are very sensitive at showing the area of the spinal cord that's been injured. And then after that, uh, if there's pressure on the spinal cord that's persistent, that's been caused by the herniation, so it's a lump of material just pressing on the cord, then surgery can be done to drill into the bones around the spinal cord and, and remove that pressure. Um, and then, you know, painkillers afterwards and process of rehabilitation and healing. So this is a, a costly and it looks, sounds like a pretty time consuming kind of surgery to do. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I mean, I, the, the cost of this has been going up. We, we run a, a, a package price that we call it at A&M that, that's relatively inexpensive because we're a training facility and so we're trying to expose people to so that they can see these procedures but uh, it, it can cost you know around ten thousand dollars these days so that's a very big uh, a bill to get thrown at you so tell us about this new treatment that you've developed yeah so this alternative is uh the idea is that we're injecting um, an enzyme which is basically a protein that digests um, other materials and the enzyme that we're in, injecting it can digest the nucleus the center part of the disc that herniates and so it can do two things when we inject it first of all it can digest material that's still in the correct place in the disc so that more stuff doesn't come out and secondly we hope that when we make the injection under pressure that where the disc is herniated out, the enzyme will follow that into the area next to the spinal cord and digest it away there. The, the, the process, we can do it much quicker than doing surgery, partly because we don't need to go through any expensive imaging and uh, we just locate the area by our physical examination and then inject a sequence of four discs. We do this under fluoroscopic guidance, and which is a moving x-ray that enables us to tell exactly where we're putting the needles for the injections. So you started this, uh, the first trial was in January of 2023. Tell us about Oscar, the, the dachshund, and kind of how that process went. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we, started, we started doing this trial uh, January 2023, and we were first of all offering it to owners that couldn't afford surgery at all, um, and so we, we just wanted to start off by offering them some treatment rather than nothing at all, which was what they'd have got otherwise. And, uh, you know, we were pleased with the, with the results, and so we've carried on since then. But Oscar was the first dog that went into this trial, and uh, he recovered pretty quickly to walk again. And, you know, he was the first of many dogs that have gone through this trial with, with good results. So, you know, not only is it take out the surgery option, but the, the recovery process, uh, and I'm speaking firsthand, I've had a dachshund that we had to have the surgery. So sad to say, in a, you know, several nights at the vet, 
and then you're talking about an extended recovery. How's the recovery process for the dachshunds or any of these dogs after uh, the shot? Yeah, so uh, the, the thing that we're waiting for both after surgery and after this injection procedure is for the spinal cord to sort of heal itself a bit. So after the disc herniates, it creates a bruise in the spinal cord. And at the moment, um, there's no treatment to make that bruise heal more quickly. So this is true in human medicine as well. There's, there's no treatment that's known to make that, that bruise get better quicker. So a lot of what we're doing is trying to allow time for that to heal itself while also preventing things from, from getting worse in the, at the same time, either by surgery or through the shot. The, the advantage of doing the injection, I think, is that it's less invasive. We don't have to make a, a surgical incision. This is just needles being put into the spine. And so from, from my point of view, I like to see the dogs afterwards because they look you know, it looks as though not much has been done to them because basically they've just had some needles put through some muscle. And so we're able to send them home to the owners much earlier, which I think is probably nice for the dogs, but uh, maybe a little bit more work for the owners that having to manage some of the things to do with managing the bladder uh, because they also get bladder paralysis as well, very commonly. Yeah, so, you know, with, with the surgery, I know it's you, you've got to figure out really fast, 48 hours or so. Is it the same way with the the injections, uh, the faster you can get that done, the better it is? Well, you'd think that that would be true. Um, in, in fact, actually, the analysis of, of, of how quickly you need to do this is, is not that clear about how quick you do need to do it. But at the moment, we're injecting the dogs. We're, we're only accepting them for in, the injection procedure within 72 hours of when they become unable to walk. But the reason for doing that is because we want to make a comparison against surgery. So our current, our current trial process is that we're comparing how quickly dogs recover after the injection with how quickly they recover after surgery. And almost all dogs that we do surgery on have, been, have gone into surgery within 72 hours of, of when they became unable to walk. And so that's the reason for the restriction, just so we can make a good comparison. So in this trial that you are doing, how many dogs have you all worked on and kind of what's the success rate look like? Um, I've, got a, I've got a colleague who works in England as well. And so we're, we're doing exactly the same trial. So it's like a mirror trial. We're, we're doing exactly the same thing. And between us, we've treated, I, I guess now somewhere along the lines of about 120, 150 cases maybe. And... The success rate depends on how severely injured the dogs are when they come to us, um, which is true for surgery as well. So the big thing that's important about judging how likely dogs are to get better after this disc herniation in the middle of the back is whether they can feel the back legs. And that means pinching them quite hard and seeing whether they sort of cry or, or try and move away from you or whatever. And um, for dogs that can feel uh, the recovery rate from surgery is, is about 95% and that's been documented, you know, in many, many years, many hundreds of cases. The, surge, the recovery rate after the injection is also around 95%, but the, we have to be a little bit less certain about that just because we haven't treated the same numbers. We're beginning to build up the numbers now to be much more confident about this. And it does look as though it is going to be roughly the same success rate as surgery. For the dogs that have lost their pain sensation, the recovery rate after surgery is about 50%, so it's much lower. And so far, with the disc injection cases, it is again about the same, but uh, we, we can be far less certain about it just because we've only treated, you know, maybe 20, 30 cases that have lost the pain sensation. And so it makes it much more difficult for us to be um, as confident about the outcome as, as we know for surgery. A lot of ex exciting results out of this. Moving forward, kind of what's your hope with this trial and moving this treatment ahead? Well, I, I think first of all, you know, we'd like to establish, you know, m much more clearly how well this does compare against surgery, but it, it is looking pretty good so far. We've both been thinking 
the, the way that we'd like this to go forward is to make the, for this product to become more widely available and perhaps to be available for specially trained vets that work in more general practice to be able to deliver it to the, uh, deliver it as well so that vets wouldn't uh, dogs wouldn't necessarily need to be transferred to a specialist clinic to better get access to this treatment and so we'd just like to make a, a, an effective treatment more widely available for dogs that have got this you know bad disease and and just to give more hope to more people that they can have an effective treatment for their dogs to recover again. Well, I can tell you again, like someone that has been through it as a scary situation for a dog owner. And then like I said, you, you, you hate the financial burden that comes on you quick. So I was personally really excited about this and it sounds like you have got a lot of other people excited uh, wanting to get their dogs uh, worked on. So thank you again for talking with me and uh, best of luck moving forward with this. Yeah, thank you. It's been great to talk to you.